Hello, Internet. I'm Maddie D, and I am here in the beautiful Forest Theater, uh, just about a week and a half away from the final Book of Mormon show here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next Sunday. Next Sunday. Not this Sunday, but next Sunday. Okay. The 14th of September. Well, I am here with one of the leads, right? One of the two main yeah. characters. Yeah. Uh, KJ Hippensteel. How mm -hmm. are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fabulous. Right on. How are you enjoying <laughs> Philadelphia? I'm loving it. It's You're loving great, it? Great time. What do you like more, New York or Philly? Oh, that's tough. I. I really love New York, uh, but Philly's been, it's been awesome to be so close to New York. Mm -hmm. I've been going to New York on the, on the Mondays and then coming back and here and being in a city. It just feels great. Have, and, you, and, have you been able to like go out at all in Philadelphia? Uh, yeah, actually, I've been working on this. Uh, so I've been taking my dog to, to Philly spots and taking pictures as if he's just hanging out in the city by himself. Um, so he, <laughs> I've got a, today we went to Pat's and then I had some Rita's ice water ice water water ice <laughs> water <laughs> and uh had uh let's see we went to franklin square and we put him on a horse and buggy uh in independence hall we've been all over the place just today that i've been doing that all week oh my so, god yeah. you've been all you've been in more places than me and i've lived here <laughs> I, know. I love seeing the cities that we tour in it's one of my favorite things about touring so that's understandable yeah. but let's talk about book of mormon yeah i saw the sh i saw the play musical yeah it's like really like dark humor like <laughs> i was shocked like the whole first half I was, like my jaw was just sitting on the floor yeah the first half most of the time in the audience it, it, it they're laughing really hard but at the same time if you look out and you see all you see is open mouths just did, now did you know that you were getting yourself into this uh yeah i mean i grew up watching south park so i kind of knew what i was getting into but i had never seen the show before i i booked it um, mm -hmm. but i had read the script and I, I knew what they were going for but when i saw it the first time i, I mean the first I saw it the first three times and I just loved it. I couldn't believe how awesome it was. And then the, even the fourth time I watched it, all I could think of was, how are they getting away with this? <laughs> well, that's kind of what I was going to ask. Yeah. Like, is there any point like during the initial stages of the like musical that you were just like, oh my God, this really is like a really crazy musical, like something that you've never, I mean, there's very few shows that are like this. Yeah, I, I think it's... Um, I think it's very it's a very contemporary piece, obviously, and I think that um, one of the great things about the show is that it can be that crazy and and that raunchy, I guess would be the word. But at the same time, it has such a beautiful story that um, most people connect with it immediately. So that's what I love about the show the most. And and I also really hope for musical theater in general that this show starts bringing in younger crowds and. Um, can extend the life of musical theater because for me I've seen a long time where um, you know Oklahoma re revivals and, and things like that and, and it's great for theater towns but a, a lot of the other towns in the country don't come out to mm -hmm. to show respect or you know just to just to watch the shows and and this show is different you know it's it, we, we go anywhere we see people in the audience that are you know my age younger it, and it's it's so wonderful to see people in the theater that are or that want to come the out younger and see, generation. Yeah, yeah. And, and hopefully that'll get them hooked and they'll come out and see the next thing you know mm -hmm. so that's that's what i'm really hoping that this show does for theater in general and i i'm i think it's a game changer okay yeah. so without like giving any of the major plot parts away can you kind of give anyone who has no idea what book of mormon is about kind of just an overall like summary of what the musical is about yeah i uh, to me, it's about two young kids who um, they go out on their Mormon mission. So uh, Mormon missionaries or, or Mormon children uh, at age uh, 19 go out for two years in the world. They're, they're, the, the church chooses a location for them to go out and to, uh, to go on their mission and to teach people about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. To me, the story is about them, these two young kids, going out in the world thinking that the world is this certain way and I, I think we as Americans can connect with that a, 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 in a lot of ways because I think a lot of us are a little naive as to the way the world the rest of the world works you know we're, we're a little sheltered and and these two kids are even more so than than others and when they get out and and they're selected to go to to Africa and um, you know Second by second by second by second, things are falling apart That's around them. So you're trying not to yeah. give anything yeah, too yeah. much I'm away. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying not to give too much <laughs> yeah, away. Yeah. But it's just a culture shock. It yeah, it's, it's a culture shock it. after culture shock after culture shock. And, and my character specifically, he, he's just ripped down and ripped down and ripped down and ripped down until he's just bare bones at the end of the show. And, um, and the other character kind of goes the other way. And uh, 
we end up with a a lot of realizations and and a lot of um I don't want to say like life life changing moments <laughs> I would guess yeah for for Elder Price and and I think he comes to kind of see the world in a completely different way in, in a beautiful way actually at the end of the show so um yeah I think that's all right I, I think you got it. it yeah I mean I, I would tell more but then it yeah no I understand age. I understand so obviously we know that it's it's a comedy of some sort but like yes. do you think it pokes fun specifically at the religion mormonism or do you think it's more making fun of like organized religion i think it's more making fun of organized religion but i also wouldn't use the term making fun i think you know it, somebody said that it's the it's an atheist love letter to religion and to me i think that that's that's really appropriate because i think the show really sh in a beautiful way tells a story and tells the people why religion there is a place for religion and why religion is important but i think there's also this part of religion that the, you know the, the, to me anyway growing up that's the part that i didn't associate with mm -hmm. was the part of if you don't believe what i believe then bad things are going to happen mm -hmm. to you right and so that that to me is the part of religion that's not what this show focuses on. I think this show focuses more on, you know, a lot of times people create religions in the past, you know, thousands of years. We've had so many religions created, right? And I th they're all created because we as a human species are going through really tough times and we need something to believe in. And I think that that's what this show sh tells us is that, you know, there, it, it's important for people to have something to believe in. Um, but it definitely, it definitely, pokes fun at organized religion here and there but it, it it's really got a beautiful way of saying that there's a reason for for religion so uh, that's that's how <laughs> i see it you know yeah no that makes sense yeah. that makes sense so how long you've been doing the show here for um, almost a month right yeah we this is our sixth week we're in our sixth week and next week will be our seventh week. okay yeah. so i've heard of like the whole like second show curse kind of thing yeah so has anything happened throughout the show that has gone wrong that obviously you need to kind of improvise to kind of keep the show going. Has there ever been any of those instances throughout your, the show's running here? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's what's so beautiful about theater, right? Every, every show is different. Something happens every show that didn't happen the night before, and that's why I think it's so exciting about theater as opposed to film. You can go and see the show a hundred times, and each time you've seen a different show. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, one of my favorites in New York, I, I was doing the show in New York, and... Uh, I'm supposed to say the prophet Joseph Smith, and I said the prophet John Smith, which is a completely different character, mm -hmm. Pocahontas. And uh, my my um, elder Cunningham at the time said, "You mean the Mormon prophet Joseph Smith?" And it, it, it was really funny. I, I thought it was really funny, but mm -hmm. I probably shouldn't be telling that. Producers, producers probably hate me, but <laughs> um, but no, yeah. It, it, every night something happens that's not supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. It's it's inherently how theater works, and um, it's always fun to just when that happens to figure out how to get back to mm -hmm. to where it's supposed to be. So you know, yeah, things happen, but it's um, for the most part, it's a pretty clean running machine here yeah cool so we have like a week and a half left where does the show go after it's leaving philadelphia show goes toronto for to toronto for 12 weeks to toronto yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. 12 weeks in toronto is where, is where they're going next and then what's next for you i go back to new york to the broadway company um for a little while um which is gonna be great my wife's there and you know my dog and my apartment stuff like that <laughs> so it's nice to be off the road for a while but yeah but I'll miss these guys. These guys are awesome, and, and it's such a great put-together show, and everybody puts on, gives 100% every night. Mm -hmm. So that's what I love about this cast. It's, a, it's such a great cast. Cool. Well, um, everyone, if you have not checked out the Book of Mormon, it is still here for another week and a half, so make sure you come by. The show is absolutely hilarious. You will be picking your job off the floor, but it is such a good time. Yeah. I've had to, I actually had to explain it to some like really religious people one right. time, and they, I was like, um, well, you can go. Like, it's going to not be like... Well, it's funny <laughs> to me that you really, like, really religious people end up loving the show even more, and Mormons end up... I think a lot of Mormons end up liking the show because they get so many more of the jokes than we get, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, there's a lot of inside jokes that even it, even just normal people don't understand them, yeah. you know? So normal people, we're not 
ever. Non- None of us are normal, <laughs> but um, but you know, yeah. So non Mormons. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Well, KJ, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, you go get ready for your show tonight. Well, Everyone else, I'm Maddie O'Neill for Philly Gay Calendar. See you next time. <laughs> Cause God loves Mormons and he wants some more A two-year mission